Persona 3 is one of the most popular games Atlas has ever produced, and for good reason too. This is the start of what fans like to refer to as modern Persona. The first few games were much more in line with its father's series, Shin Megami Tensei. However, after Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, we didn't see another game in this series for about six years. Persona 3 was the game that introduced some of the core features that helped make the Persona series what it is today. Social links, the calendar system, the dramatic shift in structure, it all went a long way in giving Persona 3 a unique identity compared to other JRPGs on the market. Combine this with some killer music and a touching story, and it's easy to see why this game is so fondly remembered to this day. The only issue is actually playing it. For the longest time, Persona 3 wasn't exactly the most easily accessible game. Back in the day, you had quite a few methods of playing it. There was the PlayStation Network version on PS3, or if you were feeling really retro, you could buy it for fairly cheap on PS2. But for the better part of a decade, there was no way to officially own the game on modern platforms. Personas 4 and 5 have been easily accessible for years at this point, and fans have been waiting with bated breath to see P3 finally make the jump. And thankfully, Atlas delivered with their brand new remaster of Persona 3 Portable. Oh boy, this is gonna be one of those videos, isn't it? So, the Persona 3 remaster just released worldwide, and now that I've gotten the chance to sit down and play it, I figured I should take the time to quickly express my thoughts. And oh boy, do I got some things to say about this one. Persona 3 Portable's remaster is very disappointing. Not quite on the same level as Nocturne HD, but it comes dangerously close at points. Keep in mind that this video is mostly going to be focused on the port itself, not so much Persona 3 Portable as a whole. So if you're looking for a review of Persona 3 The Game, then you're not going to find it here. But if you do want to hear my full thoughts on Persona 3, then I do have a few videos dedicated to the game you can check out. I'm also going to be making the assumption here that you've either played the game yourself or know the general gist of it. While there aren't going to be spoilers per se, this video is mostly for those who've already played Persona 3 and are looking to see if the remaster is worth it. Also, I received a review copy of this game from Sega and Atlas, and while I am very grateful for it, your boy's gotta be honest, even if it hurts. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's dive in. Persona 3 Portable's remaster isn't striving to be anything more than it is. This means that additional content and changes are kept at a minimum, and the only substantial differences are quality of life improvements. Much like Persona 4 Golden, P3P now has custom difficulty options, though the list is much more limited than I would have liked. You can adjust the difficulty of battles, how much experience you earn from a fight, and whether or not you want to use the new checkpoints. Don't get too excited, all this does is take you back to the start of a floor if you die. As much as I appreciate this addition, I can't help but feel as though the options are a little too limited. Persona 4 Golden gave you options for fine tuning. You got to adjust the damage dealt and damage received on top of the other settings already included. P3P has a single binary choice for difficulty, which is fine, but not as robust as it could have been. I only mention this because compendium prices are tied to your combat difficulty for some reason. I'm not a huge fan of that decision, and the custom difficulties would have been a great way to change the prices back to normal without altering the core combat. But I can't, so either I suck it up and deal with these Canada tier prices, or I change my difficulty whenever I need to buy something. It's not the end of the world, but come on, it's such a missed opportunity. They also added quick save to this game, so you won't need to worry about finding a standard save point if you have to stop playing for some reason. And that's it. That's actually all they added. So you know what that means? No manual skill selection for fusion. If you were to ask me, it's not the biggest deal, I mean, I guess I can get used to rerolling my skills again, but I don't see why they couldn't have included it, especially after Nocturne HD had that feature added in. Granted, that was because enough fans complained about the lack of manual skill inheritance, but that should have been a sign to add it to this game from the start. Keep the inheritance rules, but just let us pick what skills we want. My only guess is that Atlas didn't want to invalidate skill cards, since they basically accomplished the same thing. But the other two games have both, so why not this one? Alright, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that manual skill inheritance is too far outside the game's original scope. Maybe Atlas wanted to go for something a bit more loyal this time around, keeping the artistic vision intact without changing much of the gameplay. But if we are going to focus on the visuals, then we have a brand new set of problems. 
Persona 3 Portable wouldn't have been my first choice to remaster since the visuals are heavily compromised compared to the PS2 game. Persona 3 Fest, while not having the best graphics, has some of the strongest art direction in the series. I can remember plenty of moments in this game just from the visuals alone. Because of the PSP's limited hardware, Portable had to rely on pre-rendered backgrounds and visual novel storytelling for its cutscenes. The overworld gameplay was also mostly menu-based, meaning that the overall experience wasn't as immersive. This was understandable for when Portable came out, but since this is the version that Atlas chose for the remaster, we're sort of stuck with inherently less interesting visuals. I can imagine these assets cleaning up nicely with enough care and effort, but unfortunately, that's not what we ended up getting. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I think this remaster looks terrible. In fact, I'll go a step further and say that this is actually a downgrade in a lot of ways. I know that it might sound like I'm overreacting, but hear me out for a second. Rather than re-rendering the background images or just updating them entirely, Atlas instead opted to use AI image upscaling. Now, I've got nothing against upscaling images. When used properly, it can be a very handy tool to clean up a somewhat low quality asset. But the thing is, it's not a magic solution. While AI up scaling can be very useful, it can easily produce poor results if the source image in question is too complex or low resolution. What ends up happening is that fine detail is lost, or worse, the image is distorted. Almost every pre-rendered background in the remaster suffers from this to an extent. Some areas come out slightly better than others, but every scene has at least one instance of smudging. Some of my personal favorites are the guy in the back of this train, the calendar in the protagonist's room, and the Jack Frost picture in Polonia Mall. Poor guy looks like he was put in the microwave. And don't even get me started on the element icons. Seriously, these issues exist everywhere, and it makes the whole product feel extremely rushed. Something worth noting is that the character portraits weren't upscaled. Apparently, this is how the artwork always looked, and I'm not sure if it's just my eyes playing tricks on me, but something feels off about it. Maybe the blending is wrong, because these portraits don't match the environments nearly as well. It's as if someone just looked up junpei.png and pasted it into the game without any adjustments. This could have always been an issue, but it just stood out to me a lot more here than it did while playing the other versions. I bet most of the blame can be placed on this game's higher resolution. The PSP doesn't exactly have the best screen out there, but this is actually a blessing in disguise. Due to the low resolution and small size of the display, a lot of the assets blend in much more naturally. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that this game looks better when being played on original hardware than through emulation, since the visual experience is much more consistent. It's almost as if the 240p handheld game looks like shit when blown up to a 47 inch display. At the very least, the 3D graphics graphics scaled up pretty decently. Sure, the models look blocky, but at least the textures are pretty good. And would you look at that, the game supports up to 120 FPS on Xbox and PC, so the dungeon crawling does look pretty nice. The only trade-off is that instead of the visuals being off, it's the audio. I'm not sure what the hell happened, but some of the sound effects are completely messed up in this remaster. Either they're much lower quality than the original version, or the pitch is completely off. This is one of those points that's difficult to explain, so let me just show you some comparisons. Here goes. Here goes. See what I mean? It just sounds off, and I'm not sure what caused this. Even if the sounds were as good as the PSP version, it sucks that they didn't take the time to update them to the higher quality FES sounds. A PSP UMD can only hold about 1.8 gigs max, so for P3P to fit on the thing, the voice acting and music needed to take a hit. I get that this is more so a complaint towards the original version of the game than the remaster, but I still think that this is a huge missed opportunity. And honestly, that's the best way to summarize this remaster. But hey, at least it's only $20. <laughs> what a joke. Throughout my playtime with this remaster, I just couldn't shake the thought that I wish Atlas ported the PS2 version instead. I'm not some diehard portable hater or anything, but I think that FES is just a better way to experience the game. Plus, it probably would have cleaned up way nicer too. 
At the time of this recording, Atlas hasn't given an official statement as to why they chose this version of the game specifically. A lot of people have their own theories why, but if you were to ask me, it all comes down to marketing and lifetime sales. Back in 2020, Persona Central put out a chart cataloging the lifetime sales of each mainline entry in the series, and when looking exclusively at the Persona 3 charts, Portable beat out the other two by a pretty substantial margin. Granted, this was just for Japanese audiences and only factored in physical units pushed, but since Japan is like, their core audience, I think Atlas cares more about what they like above all else. And since they responded well to Persona 3 Portable, that's the version they picked for the remaster. My other theory is less founded on actual evidence and more so general marketing. On paper, Persona 3 Portable looks to have more content than fat. Sure, the PS2 game has the answer, which is a bonus epilogue chapter, but Portable has the advantage of being able to market the female protagonist. Regardless of whether or not you like these additions, Portable having two full-length campaigns sounds very enticing on paper. Keep in mind that this is all just speculation on my end, but I find this to be a lot more plausible than some of the theories I've seen online. Some people genuinely believe that because Portable got the remaster, that this basically confirms that a full Persona 3 remake is in the works. Which to me, comes off as cope. When you think about it, doesn't the fact that this remaster exists at all kind of go against the remake idea? Why would they bother to remake a game that they just ported? Doesn't come off as a smart business move if you ask me. Then again, porting the inferior handheld game instead of the main console game is also a bad move, so what do I know? I've had a lot of people ask me in the past why I'm so hard on the quality of these remasters. Believe it or not, I've even received a few comments saying that my expectations for these things are too high. The answer is honestly pretty simple. I'm someone who has immediate access to these games on multiple platforms. If I feel like playing Persona 3, then I have multiple methods of doing so, whether that be on the PS2, PS3, PSP, or through emulation on PC. Because of this, I feel as though these remasters of old games have a lot more to prove. If you want me to buy a game that I already own, then I think more needs to be done to justify it. These ports and remasters are getting there. Adding custom difficulty to Persona 3? Good idea. Adding manual skill select to Nocturne HD? Awesome. But the thing is, with every small step forward taken with these releases, they take a massive step back pretty much everywhere else. I guess it's good that the game is now available on modern platforms, but is that really something to congratulate them on? Oh man, look at those achievements and Steam trading cards that didn't drop for a few days after launch. At least I can buy a PNG to slap on my profile, when the nicest thing I have to say about the Persona 3 Portable Remaster is that it's only $20, then I don't think it bodes all too well. The most disappointing part about this situation to me is that there are plenty of people whose first experience with Persona 3 is going to be with this remaster. Look, if you're someone who has picked the game up and is enjoying it, then I don't want to take that away from you. I'm glad that more people are willing to give Persona 3 a shot now. It's just that I wish the most accessible version of the game was also the best way to play it. As it stands now, I honestly think you're better off playing FES, or even the original PSP version if you want to play Portable. I guess if you're looking to officially own the game and aren't wanting to spend 200 plus dollars on a physical copy, then it's fine. It works. But Persona 3 absolutely deserves a lot better than what it got, and I can't in good faith recommend this one. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I'd like to give a special shout out to all of my channel supporters whose names are on screen now. It's because of these lovely people that I'm able to make videos at the pace I do currently. These videos take a while to make, so if you're at all interested in helping out and donating, you can do so through my Patreon or channel memberships. I have a few things I can offer in return, such as early video access, a special Discord role, and even some behind the scenes content on occasion. Every donation helps, and if the rewards I mentioned sound interesting to you, then you can find out more by following the links in the description. Sorry that I'm pretty much whispering right now, it's almost 6am as I record this and I'm so tired right now. I usually stay up longer than I should working on these projects, but hey, work is work and I don't mind it. Anyways, the next video is either going to be on DMC or Strange Journey. I haven't quite decided which one I want to do first, but I'm personally leaning more towards a DMC video since Persona has been dominating the channel lately. It's always good to spice things up every once in a while. As always, if you want to stay up to date with future videos, follow my Twitter and join my Discord server. Both will be linked in the description. Once again, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.